Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Jibber Jab Reviews. Today's show is going to be more informational in nature, although I am interested in hearing what your thoughts are on the latest press release about the Swatch Group filing a $100 million lawsuit against Samsung for copyright infringement. Now I was actually debating whether or not I should do a video on this topic, as it is a rather sensitive matter, but since it really involves the entire Watchface community from developers to customers such as ourselves, I thought we should at least discuss it because it already has started to have an impact on watch faces either already in the Galaxy App Store or those that are being submitted by developers for consideration. Alright, so let me start with an overview of why this lawsuit was filed in the first place. Well, the Swatch Group alleges that Samsung is selling watch faces in the App Store that look identical to several of its own trademarked watches and they provided several examples of watch faces to back up this claim and I'm going to put them above for you to check out. The complaint alleges that the watch faces bearing their brand names are deceiving people into thinking that Samsung smartwatches are actually products of Swatch or are, and I quote, endorsed by, sponsored by, or affiliated with their company. And while Samsung is not involved in the actual development of these watch faces, they still are benefiting from every sale of one. And it states in the Samsung development agreement that they're also responsible for the content that they upload in the Galaxy App Store, which is why the giant watchmaker is going after them. The $100 million lawsuit is to cover damages for what Swatch Group claims are unfair competition and business practices. Now you may be wondering why this is only coming to light now considering smartwatches and watch faces in general have been around for several years. Well this isn't actually the first time that Swatch has taken action against potential digital violations of its physical trademarks. Swatch along with several other companies issued takedown notices back in 2014 to several websites that hosted smartwatch faces. This latest claim by Swatch though is the first time that it's filed a formal lawsuit. And the response from Samsung has been to remove those watch faces from the App Store that Swatch has identified as identical copies of its own watches. It's also taking longer now to vet new watch faces that are being submitted to the App Store, with some developers actually telling me it's taking weeks before Samsung even approves a face. Again, this is a longer review process, which is obviously a reaction to the recent lawsuit. However, in addition to the removal of the watch faces, Swatch is now demanding that Samsung also provide information about each of the third-party developers of the infringing watch faces. And this is where things will get tricky, because if Samsung does release this information, it could mean Swatch brings individual cases against the developers directly. Ultimately, it's going to be up to the court to decide who really is legally responsible for the content uploaded to the App Store. Is it the owner, being Samsung, or is it the individual developers? Okay, so here's my takeaway on this matter. Personally, I think the removal of copyrighted watch faces from the App Store is a good thing. It's going to remove developers that have been benefiting off of other people's original designs. It's going to add credibility to Samsung's audit and vetting process. It will provide honest developers with the opportunity to shine with their original designs. And it's going to set a precedent to both existing and new developers that plagiarism in any form will not be tolerated. Okay, now the downside, or perhaps a better word would be the consequence of Swatch winning the lawsuit, will most likely mean that Samsung will have to invest more money, whether that be in the form of improved systems or more staff, into developing a more rigorous appraisal and audit process to ensure any trademark faces do not make it to the store. And the money to improve their processes will have to come from somewhere, which could trickle down to the developers and having to pay a bigger share of their sales going back to Samsung. Again, this is all hypothetical at this point, but if Swatch wins the $100 million lawsuit, I'm sure that part of the requirements will also be for Samsung to implement a more robust watch face review process, and that could be quite costly. So what are your thoughts on the lawsuit brought forward by Swatch? Do you think a court will decide in their favor, or do you think Samsung will just settle the case outside of court with a lump sum amount going to Swatch? And what kind of systems or processes do you think Samsung needs to implement in order to audit watch faces more accurately and in a timely manner? Would a universal database of trademarked watches be required? 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm going to keep you guys posted on future developments of this case and what impact this will have on the developers as well as all the watch faces currently in the App Store. For now, if you are a developer and you're uploading a face to the store, then just expect that it's going to take longer than usual to have it approved. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Until then, take care. Thanks again for watching our review and if you liked it then show us some love with a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends because with your support it really helps me keep the channel going so I can continue to offer you guys discounts, giveaways and of course fresh content. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.